Hey guys, DJ here Thought Deck Cards and Games with a Monarch deck profile. So the starters just came out a couple days ago, so I've had the weekend to kind of digest the cards and figure out what I'm going to do with the deck. Uh, this is kind of a rough draft, but I like what I'm seeing so far. It's a really fun deck, and Monarchs are pretty near and dear to my heart. Uh, they are one of the older archetypes in the game. I top eight in my first regional with Monarchs, qualified for my first nationals with Monarchs, and it was just... You know, a deck that's been around for forever, and if you've been playing for a long time, I feel like you're going to be interested in this deck. Uh, just start off with some of the new cards. We have three Idea, the Heavenly Squire. Uh, Idea is great. It's a level one warrior that when it's normal summon, we can special summon a monster with a thousand defense and eight hundred attack from our deck. Then when it's sent to the graveyard, we can add a remove from play monarch spell to our hand. Uh, we're basically always going to be special summoning Eidos the Underworld Squire with our Ideas. Uh, Eidos is level two, not that the level is extremely relevant. Uh, when Eidos is special summoned or normal summoned, we get an extra summon for the turn that can be used for tribute monsters, or to tribute monsters, excuse me, tribute summon monsters. That's a better way to put it. Then when this guy's in our graveyard, we can remove him to special summon a monster with the 800 attack and 1000 defense from our graveyard. Uh, both these guys have conditions on them that make it so we cannot use our extra deck. The special summon effects on both one of these guys shut off our extra deck, which isn't actually a downside for our deck because we aren't using one. Finally, we have one Landrobe, the Rock Vassal. Uh, Landrobe is, okay, he's going to help us break through our opponent's boards on turn one. We're playing this guy instead of uh, using hand traps or something because I, I don't like hand traps in a deck that has this many draw cards and wants to go first realistically a lot of the time. Uh, Landrobe's going to help us get through our opponent's boards, it's just an extra way to special summon before we start tributing for Monarchs. Uh, Landrobe is, once per turn, we can special summon her from our hand by flipping one of our opponent's monsters into face down defense position. We lose access to our extra deck, and when he's tribute summoned, or used for a tribute summon, we can add a monster with 800 attack and 1000 defense from our grave back to our hand. Next we have our Monarchs. Uh, first we have three copies of Ether. Uh, I'm not sure Ether really needs to be a three of in our deck. I uh, might be able to get away with two, though there are some variations where I think three would be better. Uh, but for right now, I am sticking with three. Uh, Ether can be tributed or can be tribute summoned by just tributing a monster that was also tribute summoned. So you can tribute it with one tribute. Uh, a lot of times you'll have to use two since it's level eight. Uh, it does have the stats of all the like the Mega Monarchs, 2,800 attack, 1,000 defense. Uh, when she's normal summoned or just summoned, I feel like it's normal summoned. Yeah, when it's Tribute Summoned, uh, you can send two Monarch Speller Traps from your deck with different names to your graveyard, and then you can Special Summon a monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense from your deck, and it returns to your hand at the end of the turn. The main use for this is going to be to Special Summon Karaz in order to either disrupt your opponent or draw yourself some extra cards, since Karaz activates when Special Summoned. Uh, additionally, we play a copy of Kai's in this list, so we can proactively pop our opponent's cards. Uh, when we get the Kai's back, like we can summon the Kai's, push for damage, add it back to our hand, uh, and then tribute the Kai's, tribute summon the Kai's again in order to remove something instead of putting the our opponent up on cards by popping two of their things and then giving them two new cards. Uh, so it's got a little bit of utility. Uh, finally, with this in the Prime Monarch, if you choose to use an extra deck, uh, you can special summon as a Borg with her effect, and then special summon the Prime Monarch, which you sent to the graveyard with the dump two effect to instantly make a rank 5 monster. Uh, and that's something that I think is very powerful and I definitely want to experiment with a little more, but I have not figured out exactly how I'm going to do that yet. Next we have three copies of Erebus, the Underworld Monarch. Erebus is great. Uh, when Erebus is Tribute Summoned, it's got the same line about the you can Tribute Summon using a Tributed Monster, so on and so forth. Uh, when he's Tribute Summoned though, you same thing, send two Monarch Spell Traps to your graveyard. And then you can either shuffle in a card from your opponent's hand, deck, or graveyard, uh, back your hand, field, or graveyard, excuse me, uh, back into their deck. Uh, additionally, when he's in your bin, you can discard a Monarch Speller Trap to add a monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense from your graveyard back to your hand. Uh, then we have our regular sized Monarchs. Right, let's go over our last big Monarch first. We have a Mega Caius as well. Uh, Mega Caius is interesting because he's got the ability to get rid of multiple cards from our opponent's board. Being able to remove two of them is great. Uh, if we tribute a Dark Monster, which Erebus, uh, Eidos, and then Caius will all fulfill. Uh, additionally, in the mirror match, if you hit your opponent's Erebuses or their Eidos or in the 
perform a ma perform age perform out pit pit matchup if you hit skull crowbat or vector uh, you strip every copy from your opponent's deck if this guy removes the dark monster so you can really limit your opponent's resources that way finally we have a copy of majesty's fiend kaius and karaz for our regular monarch type monsters our 2400 attack thousand defense guys um these two are special summonable by Ether, which gives them a bit of utility. Uh, Kai's is just, like I said, for make more proactive pushes. Uh, Majesty's Fiend is something you have a lot of access to because of the card Return of the Monarchs. Uh, and you can very easily get Majesty's Fiend into play along with Demand of the True Monarchs and shut your opponent off from monster effects and from special summoning from their extra deck. Which is, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is close to a hard lock as I can think of. Uh, we have three copies of Upstart Goblin just because there's some cards is basically uh, idea that are just so key for me to get to that I felt that they were necessary. To go along with that, we have three Pantheism of the Monarchs. Pantheism lets us discard a Monarch spell or trap from our hand in order to draw two cards. Uh, you can also remove Pantheism to search out three Monarch spell or traps from your deck, show them to your opponent, and they put one into your hand, and I believe the rest shuffle back into your deck. Yes. Uh, you can only use that effect once per turn, but you can use the draw ability as many times as you want. Uh, to go along with that, in order to make sure we get whatever card we want, we have three copies of Tenacity of the Monarchs. Tenacity of the Monarchs says you reveal a, a monster with 2400 attack and 1000 defense, or 2800 attack and 1000 defense. Then you can add a Monarch Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. You can only use one of these a turn, but in conjunction with Pantheism, this guarantees that you get whatever you want, since you can just search out, you know, three Tenacities, or the card you want, and multiple copies of Tenacity, in order to just guarantee that you get the card you're looking for. Uh, finally, our last, oh, not our last, we have two more three of us. We have three copies of Domain of the True Monarchs. This card does a lot. It's got a very packed text box. Uh, first off, it can reduce the level of one of your monsters with 2,800 attack and 1,000 defense uh, by two, so you can drop them down to level six, making them only take one sum or one tribute to summon. Uh, if you have two copies, you can play one, make it go down to six, play the second one, make it go down to four, which gives you the ability, this is fringe, obviously, you're not going to have this very often, but you can just normal summon something like a Mega Kai's and beat over a Fog King if your opponent played it as something small, uh, which is kind of a useful ability sometimes. Uh, additionally, your Tribute Summon monsters gain 800 attack when they're in combat during your turn, so it does help you deal with certain big beaters. And the real important effect is if you have no cards in your extra deck, and control a tribute summon monster while your opponent does not, they can't special summon from the extra deck anymore. And that is an extremely unique and powerful ability. Uh, it, Like I said, it creates pretty close to a hard log with Majesty's Fiend. Your opponent has to have spell or trap removal to deal with it at that point, which is uh, few and far between in main boards right now. Like, Twin Twister might sneak its way back into the main because of this card, at which point this deck will need to be modified a little bit. Uh, but I'll wait and see if that happens before I make any big changes. Next up, we have three Monarch Storm Forth. Uh, Storm Forth is just extremely useful for clearing our opponent's boards as well as helping us protect our boards since with Escalation of the Monarchs, we can Tribute Summon on our opponent's turn. And this is a quick play, so we can use it as a removal spell. Our last Monarch spells, we have one copy of Return and one copy of March. Uh, March of the Monarchs is probably actually just win more. I'm not sure that this needs to be in the deck in any capacity at all. But it does uh, protect all our Tribute Summon monsters, making them unable to be targeted by card effects or destroyed by card effects uh, from our opponents. So it, again, just aids kind of the lock setup with uh, Majesty's Fiend, as well as just protecting our boards in general. Return of the Monarchs is the card that makes it so easy for us to set up that one of Majesty's Fiend. Uh, and it's strange to say since this is also just a one of but we have so many ways to search it between Pantheism and Tenacity that you're pretty likely to get to it. Uh, what this does is when you summon a Monarch, or Tribute Summon a Monster rather, you can add a monster with 2800 attack and 1000 defense, or 2400 attack and 1000 defense from your deck to your hand. Uh, and since this is so easily searchable, we can set up to get this in play and then search out our Majesty's Fiend to our hand, which gives us the ability to then summon it on our opponent's turn using Escalation. So it just kind of all feeds into itself. Uh, for the rest of our sense, we have one copy of Enemy Controller, just something that I'm trying out that helps us to clear our opponent's board off, uh, as well as just make use of some of our little Squire, Vassal-type monsters. Uh, one Reinforcement of the Army, since it searches Idea, which is, uh, again, one of the most important cards in the deck, and then Foolish Burial, since it can just facilitate some plays with just several of our uh, monster cards. And by several, I mean just Eidos, and maybe it does something with Idea? Does it have to be sent from the field of the graveyard? That's yeah, sent to the graveyard, so it does something with both Eidos and Idea. Uh, a card that a lot of us play that I'm not playing is One for One, because we play very few monsters. We're playing 17 creatures. Uh, we're never going to want to discard Idea, so that's just off the table right there. 
Uh, we're probably not gonna discard Monarchs unless we have a bunch of them. So that's probably off the table right there as well. Uh, if we have, if our hand was like two Monarchs one for one, one for one would be ideal. But if our hand is like one Monarch one for one, it's not playable. If our hand is Idea one for one Monarch, like playing the one for one is just slightly better than just normal summoning the Idea in most situations. Uh, if our hand is like Eidos one for one Monarch, that's pretty great. But it just seems like it was asking too much specifically for the combination of cards in my hand to be like what, you know, they need to be. And I didn't think that was worth it. Uh, so finally onto our last cards, we have traps. We have two prime monarchs and one escalation. I've talked about escalation several times already. Escalation is just basically a, almost an ultimate offering, I guess. Like we only get one extra summon, but yeah, we can tribute summon on our opponent's turn one time, which lets us use our summons to set up and then tribute for our majesty's fiend or a Caius or whatever to destroy cards on our opponent's turn in order to disrupt them. Disrupt them, excuse me. Uh, and then the Prime Monarch is a very, very useful card since the two new Monarchs send two Monarch Speller Traps from our deck to our graveyard. Uh, if we have this card in play, it shuffles two Monarch Speller Traps from our grave back into our deck and we get the draw card. So right there, it automatically will replace itself and can feed you extra cards by using your Monarch's abilities. Uh, when it's in our graveyard, we can remove a different Monarch Speller Trap from our grave and then special summon it as a zero attack, 2400 defense, level five monster. Like I said, uh, it creates easy rank five plays using Ether. Uh, additionally, it just feeds our board so we can tribute summon using this instead of having to worry about having the monsters to pay for it. Since we play a lot of Monarch Spell and Traps already, we have plenty of access to this card. Um, and additionally, it has a reasonable defensive application. Since it's a trap, we can use it during our opponent's turn to just special summon 2400 defense wall uh, whenever they're attempting to make pushes. So this card is just great. It feeds what we're trying to do. Uh, removing the cards also lets Idea. Uh, put back the cards we want into our hand so we can create our setup so we can, you know, make sure we get Escalation to tribute someone whatever we need. Uh, so it's just a really strong ability and I like it a lot. It's definitely a great card. You don't need to play three for really any reason at all. So I think two is the number. But yeah, that's uh, the list I'm working with right now. I do think there's plenty of other ways we can play this deck. You can play hand traps if you wanted to, though I'm not a huge fan. Uh, potentially it might be correct to play like a list with a pile of hand traps and then like soul exchanges on top of what I have in here for the three storm forts to like kind of make our opponent choose whether they want to keep going or not, especially if they're not sure what deck you're playing game one. So like they, they start to go off with their Pepe stuff. You play Maxi, they go, uh, all right, I guess I'll just stop on something little. You draw a soul exchange, them drop a monarch. And that's a pretty strong line, right? But I'm not 100% sure that that's the correct way, correct way to go. Uh, I do really want to mess with the extra deck version so, you know, summoning Ether, making a rank five, and then maybe trying to like escalation into a Vanities Fiend on my opponent's turn. So my board would be like Vanities, Pleiades, Ether. Uh, and that seems like an extremely hard to beat board, especially if we play like uh, March of the Monarchs as well there. So that's something that I'm definitely interested in trying out and gonna work with a little bit. Uh, other than that, this is, any other cards specifically? Nothing that I can think of. Uh, this is a Borg Vassal is okay too, but I don't think that's something you really need for anything. So, yeah. Uh, that's where I'm at with the deck, though, guys. Uh, I think this deck is really cool, and there's a lot of different things you can do with it. Let me know down below what you guys are doing with Monarchs, how you're playing the deck. Uh, if you're playing, like, a more stun-based version, if you guys are playing trap cards, just whatever you're doing with the deck, I'm interested. Uh, I think this deck is really cool. It's a little bit of fun to play by comparison to, like, it's refreshing. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, you do have a lot less combo-based turns than uh, something like Pepe or Mermel, but you do play draw cards, which makes me happy. You have a lot of sweet things you can do. And the deck is, it's kind of linear, but it's deceptively intricate. There's a lot that you can do at any given time. You have a lot of one ofs in your deck that you can search up. Uh, and I think that that's really cool. So let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, if you have any questions about matchup, sideboarding, bills you're trying, just you know, put it all down there. I'm happy to answer questions. And just thanks for watching, guys.